Her son back in the hands of Ukraine. Tales of torture and disappearances are coming to light. A report by Yale University and backed by the U.S. State Department says hundreds of people went missing during Russia's occupation of the city, with several dying in, while in custody. France 24's Luke Schrago has been speaking with people in Kherson who've been describing what life was like before the city was liberated. Children waving the Ukrainian flag and residents returning to their homes. But smiles and waves hide the darker side of what happened when Russia took over most of the Kherson region in early March. 17 locals trying to defend their city died in one battle against tanks alone, their bodies left out to rot for three days. I went outside with the tanks and all my vehicles were already there and all the guys were dead. They had no automatic weapons, just Molotov cocktails. They went into the fight with nothing more than that. For Ukrainian authorities, it was a crime of war, the first of many alleged offences. At that time, there were civilians in the territorial defence who were not part of the Ukrainian armed forces. In fact, they were just ordinary civilians from our city. Cases like this are what Ukraine wants to bring to the world's attention. As part of an organised press tour, police escorted us to one of the detention centres where Russian troops brought people snatched off the street or from their homes. Local residents nicknamed this police station the Hole. They were screaming every night. Even now, when I think back to it, I get scared. Nah. For those inside, reality was far worse. They put electric cables on our ears and the currents came through our heads. They also put those cables on our penises, our fingers. Sometimes people would get used to one kind of torture, but then these beasts always invented some kind of new technique. Locals spoke of bodies being driven off in rubbish collection vehicles and some of the living taken along with retreating Russian forces. No one knows where they are now. Against a backdrop of such brutality, Ukraine has been seeking to rally support. We hope that our international partners will help us in the international courts with charging not just the higher commanders and generals of the Russian Federation, but every single soldier and citizen of Russia who is guilty of war crimes against our country. Throughout the war, Moscow has consistently rejected allegations of abuse of either soldiers or civilians, in turn accusing Ukraine of staging events itself. But in places like Kherson, evidence continues to pile up.